Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. It's now May 2017, and earlier this month, Microsoft unveiled a new operating system. No, they've not decided to go back on their previous word and launch of Windows 11, and they haven't found Windows 9 lying in a cupboard and decided to let it out. No, what they've announced is Windows 10 S, which will start to ship on new PCs in the summer of 2017. And so, in this video, I'm going to discuss Windows 10 S, describe its features in terms of how it compares to Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro, and I'm going to talk about what this means for the future of Windows, the direction of travel of Microsoft. And I'm also going to propose another new operating system which Microsoft haven't announced, but which I think would be far more welcome. So, what is Windows 10 S? Well, according to Microsoft, it's a specific configuration of Windows 10 Pro that offers a familiar productive Windows experience that's streamlined for security and performance. So you're thinking straight away, this is a better version of Windows 10 than better than Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. It's streamlined for security and performance. That has to be good, doesn't it? Except Microsoft have achieved this by putting various restrictions in Windows 10 S, and they're significant. The first big restriction is that in Windows 10 S, you can only install applications from the Windows Store, which means if you've got something like this, a piece of box software with a CD or DVD inside it, you can't install this. You can't install box software on Windows 10 S. And if you've got software on a USB drive or you've downloaded something to your PC from the internet, you can't install that on Windows 10 S either. That might improve security, but it's obviously extremely restrictive. You can only install applications on Windows 10 S from the Windows Store. And we shouldn't forget that Microsoft gets a commission on all commercial software sold from the Windows 10 Store, from the Windows Store, and it can put advertising against free applications from the Windows Store. So Microsoft's got a great incentive beyond having a more secure operating system, so they say, to have us all use the Windows Store, which so far hasn't been that successful. The second big restriction on Windows 10 S is that the default browser is Microsoft's Edge browser, which they launched with Windows 10, which hasn't been that successful in terms of market penetration. But you're thinking, if it's the default browser, I can change it. You can't. You can't reconfigure the browser, to use Microsoft's words, on Windows 10 S. You have to use the Edge browser. And you have to use the Bing search engine. Your search function is also not configurable away from Bing in Windows 10 S. You couldn't use that a little known search thing called Google, for example. So those are the big restrictions with Windows 10 S. You can only install applications from the Windows Store. You have to use the Edge browser. You have to use the Bing search engine. Microsoft announced Windows 10 S as an education event. And certainly they'd like us to think that Windows 10 S is all about Microsoft being nice to people in education, offering a more secure environment, a better environment for educational things. And certainly Microsoft faces stiff competition in education from Chromebooks. Now, in case you don't know, a Chromebook is a low-cost laptop which runs the Google Chrome OS. And under Chrome OS, you can't install applications on the device. They have to run from the cloud. You have to run things like Google Drive on, on a Chromebook. And this makes Chromebooks good in education. They boot up very rapidly. Students can't install stuff on them and mess them up. And you know exactly what they will do on the Chromebook. So Microsoft wants a competitor to the Chromebook. That's, that's the logic anyway behind Windows 10 S. But let's look at that. The first computer to launch Windows 10 S on it will be the new Surface laptop, which costs between $999 and about $2,200. That is not a competitor to a Chromebook. That is a premium laptop. So clearly, Microsoft wishes OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, to sell us computers with Windows 10 S on them. And my guess is by Christmas this year, they would like a lot of the computers people are buying, desktops or, or laptops or whatever price level, to come with Windows 10 S, for reasons I'll come to in, in later on in the video. So I don't think you can say Windows 10 S is really just about competing with Chromebooks. Now, in terms of the broader argument in the education environment, you could say, well, by having people only installing things in the Windows Store, it makes it more secure. And to some extent, it does. And it means you can restrict what people can do in schools and colleges on the computer. And you have to have Windows 10 S for that. Except, of course, you don't. 
I've worked in education a long time. I spent 25 years teaching at a university where we had labs which were locked down. So you couldn't install applications, you couldn't even right click the desktop in those labs. You don't need Windows 10 S to have a secure environment for education. And even if you restrict people to the Windows 10 store, the Windows store, then you still aren't stopping people having things on the machine you don't want. There's lots of undesirable content in, in the Windows store, as other people have shown on YouTube in, in the past few days. And you might still get a virus or piece of malware inside a, an application installed from the Windows store. Less likely maybe than having other type of software installed, but it still could happen. So, I really don't buy the argument that Windows 10S is all about education and competing with Chromebooks and making things more secure in educational establishments. Right, beyond restricting people to only having applications from the Windows Store from which Microsoft can profit, we get now to the most significant thing about Windows 10S, certainly in my view, and that's the pricing model. Now, Windows 10S will come with new machines. You won't be able to go and buy a copy of Windows 10S, you'll get it on a new computer, a laptop maybe, a desktop in the future. And you'd like to buy this laptop or desktop and you'll have Windows 10S on it, you'll think, hey, great, I've got Windows 10S, I've bought the new special edition of Windows. And then you'll go to install some software and you can't do it. But don't worry, you can upgrade. Microsoft will allow you to pay them some money, $50 to upgrade from Windows 10 S to Windows 10 Pro, and then you can install all the software you like. Now, to be fair, I should point out that on the Windows Surface laptop, you'll be able to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for free in this year, 2017. You won't have to pay your $50, but elsewhere, you certainly will. So you could say this is a very cynical move by Microsoft to sell us computers with a version of Windows on, which is not suitable for many people's purposes, and then they'll have to pay the $50 to Microsoft to actually get a, what you could call a proper version of Windows. And I think this is a really worrying development. We know for years, since the 1980s, Microsoft has been very keen for people to use its operating systems. In the 1980s, they wanted us to run DOS, then they wanted us to run Windows. And at the time, back in the 1980s, 1990s, there were lots of competing computers in the market, lots of competing operating systems on them, and so it was sensible for Microsoft to want to almost give away its operating system to PC manufacturers so people got to use Windows on their machines. And it means we've got used to having Windows almost given to us when we buy a computer. Microsoft gives Windows or sells Windows very cheaply to large computer manufacturers. But it means there isn't a big revenue there stream therefore behind Windows. Not many people pay for an upgrade or buy a copy of Windows to build their own PC. But now that will change because people I think by and large will end up buying laptops or desktops with Windows 10 S on them. And for Microsoft, every one of those people is someone who can go, hey, give us $50 to get upgraded to a proper version of Windows. And they, they will do that. So this, I think, is a really big thing going on Windows 10 S. Some people have called this extortion by Microsoft. You'll get a version of operating system, you'll have to pay money to install stuff on it, to, to play your games, to use big applications, etc. I don't think it's quite extortion, but it is certainly a big change in the pricing model. The idea you'll get limited functionality windows on a computer when you buy it from the original equipment manufacturer, and then you'll have to pay Microsoft $50 to effectively upgrade to activate windows to do things you really want to do. That, I think, is not a good development, and it's really the thing that worries me most about Windows 10 S. Right, having discussed Windows 10 S, I would like to propose another operating system that Microsoft should launch, which would keep lots of us very happy. And that new operating system would be called Windows 7 S. Now, in Windows 10 S, we don't quite know what the S stands for. Even Microsoft don't seem to know what the S stands for. Is it um, selective or security or special? We just don't know. But in Windows 7 S, the S would stand for supported. And the reason for this is that Windows 7 has its extended support ending on the 14th of January 2020. So beyond January 2020, if you're still running Windows 7, you either have to take your machine offline so you don't have problems with the security, or you have to run it without security patches, which is a, a, a bad idea, or you have to change your operating system. Now we know right now, in May 2017, more people in the world are running Windows 7 than are running Windows 10. We don't know exactly how many people are running Windows 7, but it's at least 200 million. So I think Microsoft's got a good incentive to try and meet the needs of those people by launching Windows 7 supported. 
And my idea is that Windows 7 support will be just like the current version of Windows 7, except for two things. Firstly, it would have extended support until 2025, five more years of extended support. And secondly, you'll be able to install Windows 7 supported on modern CPUs. Now, as you might know, recently Microsoft has implemented a really dirty trick, which is if you buy the latest CPUs, you have a computer with the latest cable lake CPUs from Intel, you can install Windows 7 if you really, really try, but you can't get security updates. You can't get any updates. You can only run Windows 10 with updates um, if you actually have a Cable Lake CPU. That's a disgraceful thing Microsoft have done. So I would like to suggest in Windows 7 supported, you have support till 2025, and you can install it on any PC or any um, processor you want. Now, this of course will cost Microsoft money, so we'll have to pay for it. I've got nothing wrong about that. I would suggest that Windows 7 supported, Windows 7 S, cost $25. So let's just think through the, the logic, the economics of this. If, say, 10% of current Windows 7 users, that's about 20 million people, paid $25 to Microsoft for Windows 7 supported, that is half a billion dollars of revenue for Microsoft. What sane company wouldn't say, let's take half a billion dollars of revenue, because it wouldn't cost Microsoft half a billion dollars to keep the team of people doing the security updates for Windows 7 employed. In fact, those people will become probably the most um, cost-effective, the most productive people in the whole software industry in terms of revenue per employee. Most companies seem to sort of look in the market and say, where is the demand? What do people want to buy and meet that demand? Why doesn't Microsoft do that with Windows 7 users? It knows lots of people still running Windows 7 don't like Windows 10. They aren't likely to go towards Windows 10. And what we've just been sort of looking at in terms of Windows 10 it doesn't make us more likely to say, oh yes, we're reassured now, we'll go the, go the Windows 10 route. We're less likely to go that way. So, I'd be interested to know what are your views? What do you think about the idea of charging people, say $25, to have Windows 7 supported? Would you be in for that kind of product? And of course, what do you think about Windows 10S? I've been fairly negative about it here. Maybe you love Windows 10S, maybe you hate it. Let us all know down in the comments section. Anyway, that's now it for another video. Thanks to Jay last week for really prompting me to make this video this week. That's very nice of you. Thanks very much for that. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.